We are back. It is Tuesday and brand new move. Look away. And it is a psychological thriller that tells the story of Maria, an alienated high school student whose life is turned upside down when she switches places with her sinister mirror image. And we are joined today on Collider Live by the stars of that film. India Isley is here and Jason Isaacs. Hello, guys. How are you guys? Hello. Hello. Uh, hi, hi. It's a pleasure to have you both here. And, and you, I, you read that rather beautifully, I thought. I thank you so much. That's <laughs> it. Coming, that, yeah. coming from you. I mean, uh, that is a sh huge compliment. We are huge fans of your work. I am looking forward very much to seeing the film. Um, the one thing I'd like to talk about, we are going to get into the movie, and, and I want to talk about it, but we, right before the break, we were talking about streaming mm -hmm. as far as television goes. And we know that you had a particular take on, on Roxy had mentioned you had heard something. Yeah, I, I watched some, an interview of yours. It was really good, actually. The guy was uh, saying you're so active on Twitter that oh, he got it. your take on a lot of different things. I wish I could give him a shout-out, but I don't remember what his name was. But you were saying that you're kind of torn about streaming services because you are a binger yourself. But as an actor, when you're filming something for months and months and it comes out all in one day, it can be a little tough. Well, you know, you spend six months or nine months doing something. So I was in... Uh, the OA, for instance, which took yeah. a long time to shoot, and it's beautiful, textured, fabulous show. And, and it's a testimony to how great the show is that many, many, many people watched it in eight hours. And I was one of them. them. I was and, also one and of them. I watched it in eight hours. I watched it straight through from when I clicked on right. it, and I watch most things like that. But uh, it feels weird that it's kind of, a, I'm so used to, I've been doing this for a long time, things being in the ether and being part of the conversation of the zeitgeist for a long time. But for, for the real fans, they they click on it, and then the day later, it's they've done. Yeah. You know? India, how do you feel about streaming? Are you a, do you binge stuff, or do you like to watch it like weekly if you had? No, I binge. I yeah. was a Breaking Bad fiend. Yeah. yeah, I just stayed up until 5 a.m. every morning watching Vacant. That's how I did it. Because I, yeah. I, I was late to the bandwagon, and so like I got to binge all of it, and I didn't have to wait week after week. I have a sad story in that. I was doing Fury in London. We now live in London, but we lived in L.A. at the time. And I was in a hotel in England, and I had four days off or something, and I started Breaking Bad, and I didn't leave my hotel room. I watched oh, yeah. all six or seven I'm seasons of it, yeah. and it's just like ordered room service. <laughs> I think I probably had a bedpan to save me go to the bathroom. <laughs> I watched the whole thing. Oh, and I felt oh. bereft when it was over. Yeah, my yeah. life was empty. Yeah, yeah, the other one was The Hour. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what yeah. happened with I The Hour. I wound up doing The Wire in, like, two weeks. I watched all like was mm -hmm. the five seasons in like two weeks so binging do you guys feel like it's now because the way it is it's essentially you look at let's say like the OA right so mm -hmm. how many is it 10 episodes for eight. Eight. eight episodes so it's essentially an eight hour movie that people it, have it watched it definitely was mm -hmm. they wrote it Sal and Britt wrote it over the course of two years by themselves on spec and then they sold it and they made it I mean one of the things I loved about it it's really like their indie movies they yeah. make these little movies and then suddenly Netflix and everybody else who wanted to make it but Netflix won the bidding war went go make your movie and they did make the same director for all the uh, episodes which is happening more and more now right. and it is it's an eight hour movie and so you shoot as opposed to when you do I do Star Trek it's a different director every week and, uh, and you kind of reboot lots of things you're, you're really telling a story, a massive story. It's like it's like reading a novel instead of a short story. Right. I mean, when you look at that, when it, it was like a binge director. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing. So when you look at shows that way, do you think that streaming and, and the way that we're going with television in general is that as actors, that you have a lot more to evolve these characters to really... I don't know, it just feel, I always feel like when I watch these streaming, there's so, so much more detail to characters. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just came off of a limited series called I'm the Night, which yeah. is coming out in January. Um, and limited was, series. Is that the new jargon? We can't say miniseries or mini event series. I've it's been, now limited series. No, no, no. no. I, I've been saying <laughs> okay. miniseries okay. the entire time, and I got corrected like uh -huh. eight times okay. yesterday. <laughs> Because it sounds like 70s, 1970s yeah. show, but it's, it's a miniseries it's, it's, by any other name. It's yeah. yeah, it's a miniseries. Um, but it's it, I I had never experienced you know got, getting you know six six episodes right. to have a character you know. Also, it's written a lot of the good stuff like the series you just did with Chris Pine. They're written before you start. So when you sign up for a long-running TV series... This one wasn't fully either. It wasn't fully Oh, was it not? No. No. Okay. Well, <laughs> generally, if you're lucky, <laughs> right, right. they're written so you get... You know, it's like doing a play. You, you get to dive in. You know when you can drop little uh, hints and lay breadcrumbs for the uh, audience right. and build mm -hmm. a character in ways that you don't get... Most movies are between an hour and a half and two hours, and there's only really room to explore one character or two right. characters. But this, you can... People can behave in... Uh, anomalous ways. So uh, generally in a movie that they're, they're more streamlined, there's a kind of uh, a, a, a straighter line for the character. But in like in real life, we're different people on different days and we do things that sometimes out of character for ourselves and you can explore that, that complexity of humanity right. over more hours. The other thing is that grown-ups stay in and young people go out. So grown-up stuff is generally on a smaller screen. 
With yeah. the exception of me, I don't go out. No, that's no. <laughs> you're, you're an anomaly in so many ways. I'm just, I'm just an old, old lady. <laughs> you ever gone to a bar something? and just put on a TV show? Because I have. I've done that and before. And put on a TV show. Yeah, and you yeah. like, you guys should hey, be can watching Can you turn this. it to... Uh, right. can you, yeah, yeah. Turn the game you. off. You guys should be watching the OA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do it all the, I'm on location all the time away from my family, and I load things up on the iPad, and I go out to a restaurant, and I sit there, and I'm sure people are looking over thinking, who's that sad Johnny Nomad sitting there? But I'm having a fantastic time. Awesome. Let's talk a little bit about the movie here. So let's talk about Look Away. So I saw the trailer. And what I noticed inside of it, too, so you play, you play his father. I and, do. And so what I liked about it, I have like a carry feel to it from what I saw it, in the trailer. It does. I do, I do have a carry moment, yeah. kind of, in the film. It seems Carrie's more of a straight out horror film. Yeah, this, this is one's a, not. You can watch this and, and ask yourself at the end, did I just see something supernatural? Did I see something psychological? Yeah. What, what was I watching? I like that. And I think that for you, that's got to be really fun as an actress to play two different oh, it was roles. A blast, yeah. yeah. So well, how do you prepare in regards to that? Because you got to go mentally. I was, uh, no, I, 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 like, I like going mental. <laughs> 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 I, I like deranged roles. Um, just at Starbucks, you just walk in and go nuts. No, yeah. no. No, no, like I had actually been, I had a lot of pent up energy, so it was kind of the perfect outlet yeah. for me. Do I mean, in a way, the film is exploring that thing that all of us have, uh, you know, another side, a dark side. We're not yeah. quite sure who to be. There's ways we'd like to act out that we don't get to act out. Right. And uh, and I've got teenage daughters, and this is about a teenager, <laughs> India's slightly older, but she's playing a teenager in it. And, uh, you know, they, they, their lives become very secretive and insular, and there's a lot of time spent looking in the mirror and trying to work out who to be and how to be, yeah. um, or, or looking at Instagram or, you know, work, wondering about who to project onto the world. And it's, th it's that turned up to 11. Well, I noticed yeah. that inside of the, in the trailer alone, it's just like you're, you're telling uh, Mr. Servino, you're like, we have a very strange daughter. We have, like, the, the I think I said, actually, I think... You said the, screwed up. I said screwed up. Daughter. Daughter. I remember <laughs> shooting the scene saying fucked up. I think yeah. that yeah, might be did. a dub. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So she, well, you got a fucked up daughter, you know. But it's a, I don't know why, cause it's a very adult film. There's nudity and violence yeah, and sex in it, so I don't quite know why that was dubbed. Yeah. Is it rated R? I would be surprised if it yeah. wasn't. It I don't be. know. Maybe inside of the trailer, they just wanted to propose it. Yeah, yeah, maybe. yeah, maybe so. But um, so had you guys met? Have you ever worked before? This is the no, first no. time. This no, is the first time. Because like that always, it always fascinates me. You got to come in. You got to establish this father and daughter relationship. And it's like, and like you said, you have daughters, and you're able to. How does it? How does it work out with the two of you? What do you what's the preparation? So the for? first day on this sounds like a non sequitur, but on the first day on Sense Eight, did you see Sense Eight? The Bujalski, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. They shot the orgy scene. <laughs> People never met before. They take the clothes off, and then suddenly they're in a hot tub uh, exploring each other's body parts. So, it, this is it's slightly easier. Yeah. What yeah. we had to do. <laughs> I just had, yeah. My first day, I just had to eat crab in front of you. That was it. Well, no, you had to be disturbingly sexual and yeah. confrontational. Uh, yeah. It was. But it's, you know that's what we do as actors. Yeah. You, you meet someone and immediately you're in love with them. We're shooting the last scene yeah. of the film where they've just died or whatever. And it, our job is to keep our imaginations free and loose and be able to suddenly be in a situation, an extreme situation that we hope we never find. Yeah, and just in. be open to react to the other person. Yeah. For somebody who's scared of legitimately everything, I'm he looking re at he really is I'm really yeah. scared. Yeah. Of everything. Is. Yeah. Uh, is 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 this going to be a movie that's going to keep me up at night on a scale? Of one? <laughs> now remember, he gets like Larry right. Beardo. Give me a little of, of Makuga. He gets scared at everything that we show him. We took him into a horror movie, and go ahead. Can you do it? It's just me. Wow. <laughs> Is that going to happen in your movie? Actually, so proud. Yeah. yeah. We, we are pretty proud. We are pretty it's proud. It's not in the horror well, film in that well, sense. Uh, really. What scares you? What kind of horror film scares you? No, no, no. Does gore really scare you? Uh, like slasher stuff? Yeah. I think it's more jump scares, psychological, like dark places. Oh, oh, uh, Spiders. Like <laughs> spiders, animals. He gets creeped out um, fast. The this woods. Is uncomfortable. It's like a vice that starts yeah. tight and gets tighter and tighter and tighter, and you just have yeah. a horrible sense of dread. You just uh -huh. feel, the time. It's, yeah, you feel very uncomfortable. It's, I mean, I, um, I'm a father of teenage girls, and uh -huh. I tell you, that scares me, and uh, yeah. watching this scares me even more. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm I'm mostly, I'm terrified that my children would ever see this film, mm. uh, because they'll never look at me again. Yeah. <laughs> why, why is that? Can you see it I mean, without giving anything away? Uh, because you know, I'm not the greatest dad in it, uh. and when you see your dad behaving in a certain way, even though they know I'm pretending, they've seen me pretend a million different things, uh, still, they're looking at their dad, they already can't bear to listen to me or look at me as it is. <laughs> they watch <laughs> everything you do? No, no. God, I was in a film called uh, Cure for Wellness a couple of years ago, in which yeah. I raped and did worse things to my daughter and I hope to God they never see that or the social services we <laughs> ran my house immediately well that's the thing with you so you I mean you were one of the most uh, terrifying 
you have some of those terrifying roles. I mean, I'm a Patriot. Uh, yeah, which, they haven't seen that either. That, yeah, I don't want them to see me shooting children and burning women. Yeah, that's uh, what I mean. You're, you're a terrifying. Yeah. Well, maybe it might give you some authority in my house, which, uh, which I, I have none. Yeah, were they Harry Potter fans? <laughs> uh, no, they used to no. love coming to the set because there was uh, two things: there was free chocolate, yeah. uh, and because the toilet in my trailer flushed with your feet, oh. and so they would just <laughs> stick things down the toilet and flush all the time. That was the most impressive thing. And they, don't, they didn't care about the, the fact yeah, that it's their dad in a wig. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, it, well, here's a, it, as growing up, did you were you a Harry Potter fan growing up? Uh, I was. I mean, I I I was more into. I mean, I was, I was into Nietzsche. Uh, other, no. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, no. I, I mean, the first film I ever saw was Beetlejuice, oh, and I was wow. obsessed with it. You have great parents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, well, it can well. <laughs> or, or not. <laughs> I, it could go both ways. She was three. I, I think I'm okay yeah. now. Yeah. I was actually two. Well, were you really? <laughs> two when yeah. you saw Beetlejuice. I was, yeah. That's a great movie. Well, the funny thing is, I'm showing my daughter. I have, a, I have a seven-year-old and I have a one-year-old. Oh, both, you both wait. Girls. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I hear you, and I'm saying the same thing. I was just like, oh man, it's like a horror film once they turn thirteen. It's like a sketch. It's yeah. literally like an SNL sketch, so that you can't believe that these children you've been so close to, so open with, bonded so tightly with, suddenly to, are disgusted by your very existence. They turn on you, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, my, I, I, it's, it's so funny you say that because my daughter, when I get home, I get the big, my seven year old, big hugs, yeah. loves me so mm-hmm. much. We're watching Never Ending Story, I'm showing her the Goonies. And I'm like, one day she's not going to want to have anything to do with it. She me. won't remember any of the fabulous uh, times you spent together. It'll be like it never, like you're a stranger who's walked in the house that stinks. Give me. <laughs> Give yeah. me, well, give me, yeah. you can yours? sometimes stink. 16 yeah. and 13. Uh, well, both of them right, right now? No, the 13 year old is still kind of, uh, you know, will tolerate our, our existence. The 16 year old aspires to orphan status every day. Wants nothing <laughs> to do with you. Do you yeah. ever take a role for them? I was listening to Matt Damon on The Ringer talk about how he thinks Ben Affleck solely took Batman because he wanted to impress his kids. Have you ever thought about doing something like that? Yeah, I've done some uh, things. Well, I've, certainly I've taken things so I can be near them physically, although not on location or go somewhere that I'd like them to come visit. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've, uh, the opposite is true. I've turned things down. I thought I can't have them watching this. I, I did. I shot a film with Peter Pan many years ago, and I was surf- shot in Australia. And I was out. I got caught in some waves trying to surf way beyond my pay grade, and I thought I was going to drown. I had to call for the lifeguard, and it was about probably a minute, but I thought it felt like an hour where I thought, oh, I'm going to die now. And my and daughter, then Zach Efron comes yeah, out. And my <laughs> daughter Lily, who was only one at the time, I thought. All she'll have as a memory of me is me slaughtering and raping and murdering oh. people. I've got to do some nice stuff. I haven't even finished Peter Pan. Right. Yeah. Speaking of which, real, um, my daughter is obsessed with Peter Pan right now. And, and it's a beautiful there. film. She's yeah. obsessed is. with yeah. the movie. So I, that's like she's actually doing the play now. She's doing oh, wow. it today. She's going to. She's doing the play of Peter oh, Pan. So fun. when you said that, it just. So I'll tell you a weird thing about Peter Pan. Um, if we can go off on a tangent yes, for a please. second. Go ahead. You're so I go to lots of sci-fi and fancy conventions yeah. because of all the best and stuff, things I've done. And all the photos are laid out of Harry Potter and, and various other you know, big hits. And Peter Pan was a flop in the cinema. And lots of women come up dressed fully in Harry Potter costume in Slytherin or dressed in one of the characters. And they see the Captain Hook picture and they almost guiltily look over their shoulder and they go, actually, can I have a Captain Hook picture? Can you sign that? It's my favorite <laughs> film. And, and they don't really understand why it connected with them. And it's because... It shouldn't be called Peter Pan. It should be called Wendy. That story is about a girl who hits puberty, who shares a bedroom with her brothers and plays at being pirates and is told, today's the day you grow up. Uh, And at that, when the book was written, you know, that meant you have to have sex, have a family, have a husband, have children. And she's a kid, and she's so terrified of puberty that she dreams that night of a world in which no one has to grow up. And she's got a friend who's got baby teeth. But there is a man there, and he's weirdly seductive but repulsive, and he looks like her dad. And it's the most Freudian story ever written. <laughs> and it, it speaks so powerfully to girls who are expected to be women by the world and looked at uh, yeah. as sexual beings and they feel like children, but they're on the cusp of something. And it has an amazing effect on people and they don't understand why. And over the years, people have done weird things. Spielberg took the Peter Pan character and made yeah. him grow up, you know. And, uh, mm. and they made the film recently with uh, Hugh Jackman and stuff, but they're concentrating on the wrong bit of the story. Jane Barry's story is about being a young woman and being catapulted into adulthood. I love hearing your take on it. That's really, that's really awesome, special. But um, the Beetlejuice thing, still want to go back to that. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah, I, I didn't really answer your question. Did no, I? I, wanted, well, I wanted to hear the answer to that, but I also want to hear, because again, like when f- talking to a father of two girls, and then um, my daughter is a, like a cinemaniac already at seven, what? Because I'm, I'm showing them the right movies. Like I said, it's Goonies and when First Blood. Uh, I'm not sure First Blood. Not yet, but she is a, Harry, she's a big Harry Potter fan. What movies did you start out with? Because Beetlejuice is, you definitely Princess don't hear Bride, that often. Princess Bride, too. You should I did, Bride, I I did like The Princess Bride. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I grew up with my brother's hand-me-downs, so The Goonies was there, all the Star Wars yeah. were there. How many but brothers? But then, oddly, I, uh, two, two. Two older half-brothers. But um, 
Uh, I, oddly, I gravitated more towards like Apocalypse Now for some reason. But <laughs> yeah, I, like I, know, I know that sounds really weird. No, not like really. Seven no, just, not yeah. at all. Seven, at seven, go, yeah. <laughs> seven. Nothing seven. like the smell of napalm in the morning. Could you, yeah. find, <laughs> could you find stories when you were young that had women in the lead? Women that um, you know, role models. There weren't very many. There weren't, weren't. Yeah. I, I did think of Lydia and Beetlejuice as kind of a right. cool. She's awesome. Yeah, cool she was. Character. She was the lead. Yeah. And yeah. also um, Ripley and Alien. I loved mm-hmm. Alien One and Two. Yeah, but you look at that time when you, well, Winona Ryder and, uh, and well Gina Davis and, yeah. and and Sigourney Weaver. Those were like the those were the big female kind the of very leads. few. That's very such few. a tiny I number because when You're my right. kids are growing up, we're looking for films in which they're not princesses and they're not waiting for a, a man to come and make things okay for them. I think there's very yeah, few. And I think that's the thing is because I found the princess thing very boring. Like yeah. it was, who'd want to be a princess locked away when you can be Indiana Jones? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, like, that's the truth. And it, you know, and I used to just my parents. I was lucky. My parents always encouraged it, um, and they didn't say, "Oh, well, that's a boy's thing." That's I right. I kind of grew yeah. up with that leeway and that freedom of, um, of just being able to, you know, like what I liked. I would never do that to my daughter because of the, uh, she watches Star Wars all the time. She watches. I give her Star Wars books. I know, but you still get sublim. There's a subliminal message when you get Prince Louis going, "Come and help us, right. man." Yeah, that there's we need a some men to come and save us. In the, in the original trilogy, I agree, but in the new ones, now yes. you look at Willie yeah. Gray right, 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 and right. even Daisy Ridley and, and stuff. Yeah, Rogue One with Felicity Jones. Um, they, they've they've completely changed that for sure. Um, and I know that, again because there's such a short time. Another thing that we had mentioned before you guys came in, I want to bring up Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Have you? Did you go on cast? Did you go in f- for that at all? No, that's crazy. I think I've been working. Uh, all my friends are in it, obviously. But I'm saying that's what I mean. But because th- I, to me, it's like you were like the perfect person to be in that show. And I assume it was because you're so slammed with everything that you're doing. It, I'm busy doing stuff, and you know, uh, maybe there wasn't a part that was right for me or stuff. Is that a show? <laughs> what? You, there yeah. was like 14. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, no, of course, there were parts that were right for me, but yeah, I was yeah. probably busy. You know, one, one of the, your prime asset as an actor is your availability, right. and uh, if you commit to something, you're, you're done. In fact, it's one of the reasons why a lot of us in Potter uh, consider very often through the years not doing the next one because they come. They're lovely people. But they would say, we need you in January for uh, a week, and then we need all of March, and then two weeks in June, and then uh, November. And that knocked you out for a bunch yeah. of other jobs. And uh, you weren't paid for in between. They, you know, they paid properly, but they didn't pay for the whole year. And it, there were numbers of times I thought about not putting it on, put that wig on again. And just in the end, I balked at anybody else getting to do it. Yeah, well, wait a minute, though. So with that, that's interesting. So don't aren't, don't they lock you down? Like, because for, they don't lock you down? They didn't lock me down. That's no, they crazy. Didn't. I think some of the younger guys were locked down. And I know that the, uh, my friends with Game of Thrones, it's similar. You know, you, you watch the show, and you feel like you're watching this whole. But actually, some of those episodes, quite a few of the episodes, the characters barely appear in it. They've done two or three days filming yeah. and then they wait three months or four months for the next bit mm. does that make you guys nervous in general when it comes to because you look at right now we're in the big franchise stage of movies and yeah. bigger than we've ever been with Marvel and DC and Star Wars well you say bigger studios used to make 50 60 films a year now they make 10 well I mean as far so as like much less work yes. but they're making these giant you know happy meal movies true but you also you get you, well we just mentioned our whole thing on streaming the TV is so much different now than it was say 10 yeah. 15 years ago but yes you're you're 100 right in regards to how many they're making but I say bigger in regards to when you lock down a Marvel movie you, you could be locked in for like seven eight movies yeah, yeah. Star Wars and all that is that something for both of you is that something that you would Obviously, the money is great with these movies. I don't know that it is, actually. Mm-hmm. I'm, not sure. that. I, I'm not sure that everybody gets paid a fortune. Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah. okay. I mean, depending on the role. And I they guess. lock you down. So, I, By the way, I've never been offered any of them, so I've never had to confront this. Have you? Neither have I, no. no. no well, we should have such problems. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. well, we were talking earlier about like the, the difference between you know 24 episodes to 13 episodes to 10 to even 8 on streaming services, and we kind of had this back and forth of like, well, if you shoot 8, then you can go shoot another yeah. 8 somewhere and stuff like that. Where do you guys land on the spectrum of what you prefer to do in, in that kind of um, I mean, I was on a show for five years, and honestly, being a series regular, it would ha- have to be a character that I really you hated liked. It, did you hated it. Well, yes, as you, as you keep hearing. <laughs> no, because it, I get bored very easily, yeah. and so I, I kind of always I like moving on to different things, and um, the idea of just being locked into something f- for too long is just like right. Unless the I character, don't want to do it again. Yeah, really. the stories like Breaking unless, Bad and yeah, stuff unless hey, right. if you know if. If it Vince turns out to be it, genius, that's great. Yeah, I mean, if but Vince if it's Gilligan limping on and it's very mediocre, so I suppose. No, no, that's fine. But if if it's something <laughs> that's just, if you feel like you're filling the gap between commercials, 
then it's soulless. If right. you feel like you're telling a great story well with great writers, that's fine. But but because we've occasionally, because of the way the landscape has changed, you do get to do what you like to do as an actor, which is tell real stories, whether yeah. it's over six hours or eight hours or 13 hours or in a movie. Then that thing about just rebooting weekly and going to a job, you know, like, like going to an office. It's like punching a clock. It's yeah. just infuriating. I have a couple of friends who've been in those shows which are you know, solving the crime of the week or catching the serial killer of the week. And their biggest artistic decision every day is blue or black suit, sunglasses or not. <laughs> you know, and they enjoy the money, right? but they enjoy the money on the odd weekend they have off. But they don't, they don't look forward to going to work. Yeah, and you lose yeah. kind of what makes it fresh and, and fun to yeah. be an actor. Well, yeah, the, first the creativity goes away. Right. And it's just... Well, I mean... It's, go ahead. It's in that kind of realm. So you did my favorite show... Probably the most underrated show in the Gilmore history. Girls. Of no, no, it's a great one. Brotherhood. Oh, oh thanks yeah. very much. Yeah, uh, it's that was fantastic it's the show. kind of thing where when I started watching it, this was this was right up my alley. It was that that Boston Providence Irish Mafia version of The Sopranos for Showtime. You did twenty nine episodes. Was there a point in that show when you thought this is going too far? I mean, I thought no, it, it ended too short. Funnily enough, uh, I had no idea because I just come out of the Harry Potter contract, and so I was available to, to sign up for a regular TV series and. Uh, I had no idea how spoiled I was doing that show because the the episodes were completely generated by character. You didn't have to solve the crime of the week. No. That it was just whatever the writers thought was interesting and, and dramatic. And only in retrospect, because I've done a couple of network shows since then, I've done some pilots that didn't go since then. When they're trying to find a formula that you can, you know, just add water, rinse, and repeat. And I, I only in retrospect do I realize what fantastic creative freedom we had telling those stories. Yeah, yeah Brotherhood well, was something else. Well, let's talk about Star Trek then, because Star Trek. The question is like, how do how do you keep it? Because Star Trek's been done so much, mm -hmm. and this, this series now is getting a lot of buzz with the fans and everything. How do you keep it fresh? How do you keep how do you keep Star Trek, uh, you know, in in the the eye of pop culture? Well, it's exactly what we've been talking about. This is a brand new Star Trek on the streaming network, and so they're telling a single story over a mm -hmm. season. They were always weekly episodes, so you know. Kirk's best friend would die in next week forget about it and right. whatever would happen it doesn't matter because it was a reboot and you could watch them in any order this is what we're you know like the look away uh, the movie that we're in or like uh, India's series this is a single story so you get to do all those fabulous things as an actor you have secrets you have surprises you have layers that you're hiding from the audience that you're revealing bit by bit and you don't have to reboot to zero every week and going off of that point, India, too, where, you know, Jason had brought up before, when you're watching movies when you're younger, there's not a lot of lead roles for women. There's mm -hmm. few and far between. And now let's fast forward to 2018, and here you are leading this movie, Look Away. And this is this is a big this is a big role. This is a big... This it's two big roles. Two yeah. big yeah. roles. Yeah. They're yeah. two big roles. Like, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, do you feel a certain... Um, I don't say like... I think there's just pride in it. I think there's responsibility in it for, let's say, new up and coming female actresses who yeah, are looking. Yeah, I mean, I, I just uh, not responsibility, but I th because I, I think it would be very irresponsible for me to pr promote how this girl is and how she relates to the world. <laughs> right, sure. <laughs> but, um, but I think it's important that we. D I know it's like kind of the token answers. That I think it's important that we have a films that with you know females being the focal point, but also b exploring things. You, you know issues that we all have male or female right it's i think it's a, anyone can find something to well, there were a whole bunch relate. of subjects that just weren't dealt with for many years yeah. in most films and, because and they're all kind they've, of coming out and, and everybody's you know the world is 50 percent male 50 percent female and these issues and certainly parents and, and daughters and stuff is completely universal they just didn't put women at the center of stories or females at the center of stories no they before, weren't really for a long time we weren't really thought of as humans for well, a long no, time the thing we, is, we were there but it was just there's not, two things one it was, it was thought divide. Sorry, but it oh, was no, thought that any, everything's run by men or was run by men mostly, which isn't, thank God, true now, but uh, increasingly at least. Um, but also it was thought that people didn't buy tickets to see films that had women in the lead. And that's just been given the, the, the lie by just too much empirical evidence. You say that yeah. it's, you, you are so accurate there. I worked at, so I worked for Joel Silver for about three years. Wow, let's yeah. talk about that for half an hour. <laughs> we can, we can. Wow. Um, we talk, I, for about three years, and, I was, and we were on the Warner Brothers lot. And I, I went into that building. I thought they were playing a tape of a Saturday Night Live sketch about Joel because I'd heard about him. I heard this crazy, hilarious screaming come from the oh, other yes, room. Yeah. But no, it was Joel. Oh, absolutely. He would yeah. go to that the other level. It's almost like my man's like impression. Scott, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but he would. He would. Um, but I remember it was, was on the Warner Brothers lot. His office was where the old Frank Sinatra building right. was. So we were there, and I remember when, at the time, we had Joss Whedon's script of uh, Wanted Woman, and there was a lot of people didn't think female-led action movies could 
were. Yeah. And now again, you fast forward. Which is insane yeah. because I'm actually, not saying Joel, but I'm just saying what I was saying. The slightest bit of research shows you that when people go out in couples to see a movie, it's always the woman who chooses chooses what's going on. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've been married one year. It's like <laughs> dominant. I mean, it's, it's one true. year. Yeah, but I mean, again, you look at look at now. I feel like there's a lot, a lot. I mean, I think that there's when you Wonder Woman, obviously with Gal Gadot, yeah. broke a lot of records. When you say a lot, it should be at fifty percent. Not it's, as a quota, but I'm, it just I'm should comparing, be I'm comparing it but as look at the to superhero, last year. Yeah, but look at the superhero films. How many of them are about women? You can name Wonder Woman. Name me two others. Right. I mean, when you look at, I mean, when, even with Black Widow or... Um, Captain Marvel. Or Captain, well, Captain right. Marvel. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, what I'm saying is compared to when I'm sitting in an office, like, it's yeah, not yeah. going to work as opposed to now when... when and, and not even superhero movies. You look at something like uh, Atomic Blonde with Charlize Theron yeah. or Red Sparrow with Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence. These movies are happening more and more and more as opposed to 10 years ago when they didn't. I think I think you're right. I think there's more opportunity and there's Hopefully so many Hopefully they more. won't all be assassin movies. <laughs> I mean, those, that's true. It's like my daughters to watch. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I, I, they, I hope they don't aspire well, I mean, to being who well, you are in this film. No, no. I mean, La Femme Nikita was actually the one that I thought of. I don't think she would qualify as a superhero. No, but, but, um, but, it's, but it's I remember growing up loving yeah, that as well. For what sure. do you guys think about behind the scenes? I know it's become a little more popular to have a 50% female crew. How do you guys feel about that and how that's affecting movie I, sets? I think it shouldn't enter into it. I think if someone's good at their job, that gender shouldn't play a role yeah really. but, the, but unfortunately, people hire people who look and feel like themselves make them come yeah. so sometimes you have to force a quota to some yeah. kind of affirmative action just to balance things out then hopefully you can take the those you know guiding wheels off yeah, yeah. um so look away where it come out it comes out this weekend comes out yes. on thursday friday, I think. friday. On and it, so it's on in cinemas in 10 cities or something but it's also Anywhere you can download or stream a movie yeah. Uh, yeah. and pay for it, VOD, it comes out at the same time. And make sure you check that out, guys. Uh, look away. And th- we still have some more time, hopefully. Yes, we do. We have five more minutes because before we do that, um, because you guys are, are you done for the data today? Or? No, no, we've got a ton more. <laughs> ton more. Interviews. Good. It's a strange thing when you make it. I grew up in an era where I knew nothing about the actors in the films that I loved. And you know, you'd see a film. Who knew anything about Robert De Niro's private life <laughs> right. when he was making those films? Scorsese. You don't want to know. He didn't you don't know want to know he's the child of middle class artists in New York. Mm-hmm. You know. You want to think maybe he's a gangster. <laughs> right. You don't know if people are gay or straight or English or American. But now, in order to make people watch things, you have to go out and tell them things about yourself, which actually impede the audience's suspension of disbelief. But you've got to do it. So Sometimes, we have a lot more. This yeah, day. I think. So. I mean, yes. And when I hear you say that, because I go, like I said, I've kn- I've known you now for half an hour. Um, my vision of you, of all these things that I've seen you, is is a villain. Clearly, I don't know, I don't think you're a villain in real life. That's um, right. But but the point is, you know that when someone comes in here. But I do want to see that side of other people. For me, because but it doesn't help you be be transported by a story. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Um, you, you're right because now when I when I see the movie, I'll be like, oh, I spoke to him. He's a really. And by the way, India does a sensational American accent. I uh, uh, you know uh, essay in American yeah. accent. We're American in it. I don't want people to watch it and think, oh, I can hear his accent slip uh, because. Yeah. I, I have uh, an agent once called me. I had to do a voice. I was in a film called Wind Talkers, and they I yeah. did it for about twenty seconds. But I have all the plot because I tell Nick Cage what his mission is. So the trailer was just me and Nick Cage. So uh, people thought it was a two hander, although I'm in the film for no time. Anyway, they needed to redub the trailer to be even more exposition. I wasn't available, and they had an American guy do it. And I said to my my agent, calls me and he goes, "Have you seen the trailer? It's unbelievable. It's like it looks like a two hander." And I said, "How's my accent?" He goes, "Well." You know, I know you, so I hear accents slip a little bit, but I'm sure nobody else will hear. And I went, you know what? It's not my voice, you fucking idiot. It's an American. <laughs> and then you so, fire them. So when people know that you're English, right. yeah, they even that stops they look, them. They, yeah. Yeah, well, they look for it. It's funny you say that because la- we, okay, we but saw... Okay, that, but that's what? actually legitimate. It is, because, could, because of the show. But it, that's not we'll why. Tell, I just, them I just could hear it. I heard um, it, when we Foy. just saw First Man, I heard Claire Foy's accent. But right. it's not because I know that, it's because I hear it. Yeah, well, my, maybe. Because I, you know, I, I like accents. I do a lot. We both work with dialect coaches and do accents. When you listen to people, their accents change when they talk. They, oh, sometimes yeah. a vowel comes out one yeah. way. Sometimes it comes out another way. There are anomalies in people's speaking voices. But you, somewhere you know she's English. <clears throat> so when you hear a noise, a certain sound, you might be, you know, she might have grown up on the East Coast. The character might have a, a mother who's from Boston or something. And occasionally you not pronounce her R's because, you know, because she's angry or drunk or something. Right. But because you know she's English, that will draw your attention to it. Yeah, I think that's true. She's playing a real-life person, though, so a a comparison to that, not just, like, this character, right? She's playing Neil Armstrong's wife, so... Yeah, Yeah, but in the day-to-day, accents do change, and so... Absolutely. 
no one and some people are shitty at it. Yeah. Yeah. Not Clara, she's amazing. Some people do it really badly. Very yeah. talented. There's nothing to do with that. I, I can't. Yeah, some hear. people don't do accents well. Some people don't. We it's were going over it before. I'm from New York, and I'm always I'm I'm honing in on people when they're trying to do New York accents. I'm that's the most critical I am on anybody because I. But she's from Boston, she's from so Boston. she hears Boston. And I'm from so Pittsburgh. The Boston no actors it. couldn't do the Providence accent because it's down the road. Yeah. Me and Jason Clark, who are Englishmen in Australia, yeah. we could do it because we were building a full accent from scratch because they were asked to make adjustments and because American actors generally don't. have have to do dialects and accents because it doesn't tell you that much about a character like it does in Britain. They don't have those muscles. And it was interesting how we managed to do it and they didn't. You guys are we... much better at doing us than we are at doing you, oh, yeah. I will say. Yeah. Mm. Well, we were bombarded with American culture from the time we were born. And you, you Was are... there like an American when you first started doing the accents that you like modeled your accent after a little bit? Well, it's, it's always someone individual. So at Black Hawk Down, there was a guy who trained us when I went to train with the Rangers in Fort Benning. And in Providence, there was a guy called Brian who lived, it was an Irish, you know, Irish American from uh, Warwick. So it's always someone specific. If you do a generic accent, you'll sound crap. Yeah. Uh. Um, the last thing before you, yeah. where, where do you get yeah, the American yeah, accent? I, I, Who do you, you do? You know, honestly, it just depends on the Your job, dad. really. Well, my dad is American, so oh, okay. it would, I'd kind of get a lot of shit if so I didn't do it well. Yeah, where did you, where'd you grow up? I grew up like all over the place because my mother's not an actress, and so I grew up on sets. Oh wow! That's, that sounds very pretentious, but no. it, how, many know, how many times? She told me this before. How many times did you move growing up? Oh, like over twenty-four times. Holy wow! Wow! wow. wow. So they were on the run from the FBI. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that's yeah, it, it, the actress thing was just a cover of it. Yeah, well, let, let, she's older now, so it's fine. And <laughs> gonna, tell people. She's killed well, enough that's people. You guys got to go, but I want to explore that for a second. So when you, so where would you, where were you born? I was born in LA. You were born in LA. I was LA. born in downtown LA. Oh wow! So and then you. Yeah, and I don't sound like I was born in downtown. You don't, but yeah. <laughs> it's so like what neighborhood? <laughs> where well, you spent the most time, obviously, in in London. Uh, yeah, visiting because we always that we didn't talk to the American side of the family very much. Oh, uh, what they do? If ever, I don't know. You don't honestly. know. Honestly, right. um, no. But so when we spent time with family, it was over, always over there. And. Um, but did you flip? So when I lived here, my kids went to school here, and they were completely English at home. Yeah. I did went they to, start I, to a parents' American? meeting one time. And they said, so Lily, tell your dad what we were doing this semester. And she went, oh, we were looking at the Romans. And I went, excuse me, what is that accent you're doing? She went, dad, don't, not now. <laughs> she ha- did you have an accent? Did you flip I, with yeah. friends? Well, yeah, because when I would come and I would go to school when I came into L.A. just for, for, for brief periods. And sometimes in order to not be bullied, you'd have to kind of. And when American. I was on the show for five years. A bunch of idiots bullying kids with, with what's, accents. What's very strange is, uh, and this took a lot of a lot to a lot of time to correct is because um, when I was on that show for five years, all of my interviews, if you look back, I sound American because one, it was easier to just stay in the accent because mm. I was on the show every day, every yeah. week. Um, but as soon as I left the show, I would go in for readings and I was speaking like myself, and they would be like. Wait. What? What? What's what? What is it? Have you had a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great tool, though. I mean, obviously, yeah. a great tool to have in the. It was just very uh, many awkward conversations yeah. with people. Um, As yeah. someone yeah. who grew up in the industry, I feel like you probably have learned a lot of tips from your mom. Did, is one of those? Did you watch a lot of Jason's films when you knew you were going to cast with him? Did you were like go no, and do your was, research uh, on who you were born? Sure. No, that, oh, no, I I was very thrilled because I was doing a film in Plymouth and. Um, when I got the call that I had gotten the job. But first they called me to say that you had signed on to do it. And I was just floored because I was having such a terrible experience in Plymouth. Oh, no. Yeah, And, and you were it, a it fan of like, his? Yeah, and it, it, there was a few, like, you know, near-death experiences in this job in Plymouth. <laughs> and, um, what happened? I don't even... It, the film didn't even get made. It was wow. a nightmare. Yeah. and um, okay. Plymouth, uh, Massachusetts? Is that like Ma- the Pilgrims, okay. Plymouth? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I have a house there. That man. makes it worse yeah. somehow? The, the pilgrims are there? <laughs> no, I, I live there, so I love oh, okay, Plymouth. I'm sad for it. The people in Plymouth were lovely, just not the group that we were with. Oh. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, so I got the jo- got the call that I'd gotten the job. And um, so all throughout this job, like I had almost died a couple of times. And I was like, Wow. I, I'm not dying for this film. I need to get to. I need to get to that that job. I need to work with Jason. I need to work on the look. Like this, I can't. This can't be the last thing. I mean, <laughs> we, we, you had to do months of ice skating. Didn't yeah. you nearly injure yourself there? Because you, there's did. some I tremendous ice skating in the film. You had to do it for uh, months, didn't you? I had a great double. Oh, uh, <laughs> what? They <laughs> Don't pull the curtain well, back on us. Well, we pretty much are just by being here to an extent. Yeah, that's true. Truth. 
Um, um, I have a couple of scars from that. Do you really? I mean, yeah. that, I want to hear more about that Plymouth otherwise. thing. We don't have enough time. Uh, <laughs> last Dan tell stories out of school about films that don't happen or so people I, behave I know. Badly. You'll crowd. never work again. I know. I know. Last thing, um, we have, we're have. we in the middle of Oscar season here, getting re- or getting close to all the, the big The middle of Oscar season? What, is it mm-hmm. Christmas already in your house? <laughs> well, well, here, here, here. February, for God's no, sake. No, no, no. Oscar season, not, not, that's when it comes out, but the yeah. movies start getting to hit. Getting screener. The movies start to hit now. Like, Star is Born, I saw First Man. Yeah, so how are you guys like so when these movies which movies are you looking forward to this season there's been a lot of buzz out of the Toronto Film Festival there's certain movies coming out Jason Clark by the way was great in First Man yeah. last night really um, did you get a chance to see the First Man I didn't I saw Star is Born I you had a did. film in Toronto myself and so I, I was mostly doing promotion but I, I saw Star is Born and like everybody else I was swept up in Gaga hysteria <laughs> okay yeah, yeah I, that, that's the one so I had this whole story today it keeps I keep missing it I missed right. all the screenings for I'm finally going to see It'll it. be around. I know. You, I, know. you might have to buy a ticket, which I'm sure rankles enormously. <laughs> but you could probably claim it back on a Burn! Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Well, last night, last night um, I went to go pay for it, actually, and it was right. sold out on a Monday right. night. So We're uh, going to have a due date. We're going to go in a couple yeah, days. Do you have a lunch. particular movie that you're looking forward to? Seeing? I've been terrible this this time around. I haven't been seeing anything. She's been trying to get killed I mean, in hey, Plymouth. Yeah, no, no, it'll give me an excuse to binge on it's the all binging. of the screeners. That's the it's thing. a terrible thing to say because the, the only sorry. way to see a story is, no, not what you said, but what oh. I'm about to say, the, the only way to see a proper film is with hundreds of people in a dark room because that's how we get told stories and that connects us in yeah. common humanity. But I get the screeners. So yeah. I'm going to watch them all at home <laughs> when my kids yeah. are asleep. Same here. I mean, again, and that's also, you're, you're, you're a father too. I'm, and the same with me. My wife and I like to sit back. We're well, waiting for my screeners because once they right. come, I'm just going to sit back and what I saw on the plane, which I thought was magnificent, is Leave No Trace, the Deborah Granick film with Ben Foster. And That's it's what they were amazing. talking about. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see it. The dog takes. Yeah, I didn't She's see a it, stunning. Yeah. I was a judge at a film festival a few years ago, which were, uh, and we were judging world premieres, and it's not a big festival, so they had really shitty films, and we were just watching <laughs> five appalling waste of time every day. And I said to the programmer, I've got to see something good, for God's sake. She went, you're watching five films there? I said, I don't give a fuck. I've got to see something good. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> she said, there's a screening of a film in a minute. Go and see it. It starts there. And I went to see Winter's Bone. Oh, yeah. And I ran straight across the road. And I went to a bookies, because in, in Britain, you know, they have bookmakers in the street. Mm-hmm. I said, I need to put a bet on. And he said, oh, the race is just finished. I said, no, i just seen an actress, and I think she's going to get an Oscar oh, nomination wow. at least. So he's going to put a bet on that. And you can put a bet on anything in England. And this is in Scotland. <laughs> and he said, he's from London. So yeah, he goes, could you not put a fucking bet on in London? Because it's not for four months. And I went, all right. And I never did put that bet on. Oh, but I saw Winter's Bone, man. and it was a magnificent work. And she's done it again. It's a yeah. superb film. Wow. It's well, awesome. But right. it won't be in the Oscar conversation, because you're only in the Oscar conversation if someone writes a giant check to run a campaign. Yeah. It's not a meritocracy. Yeah. The, the great things don't necessarily rise to the top without a campaign behind them. It yeah. is 100% on Rotten Tomatoes right now, 100%. It's, it's incredible. That's the one that the Jay was talking yeah. about, right? Yeah, he was, it's, so we have, there's another show that was mad at us because we haven't reviewed it yet. So right. we should. Did you see Lean on Pete? There's another film I saw. On no, the those book. are the two. Lean on Fantastic okay. film. That's the horse one, right? Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful yeah, I miss film. that. India. Jason, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks Look for away. I, once again, guys, it comes out in limited, but you can also find it, like Jason said, streaming. It's on demand, so make sure you check it out. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it.